All right, good morning. Hey, Sister Mary. How y'all doing today? Should be good. It's the Sabbath. It should be. I should be doing wonderful. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Yeah, how, how about this? Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. All right. Glad to see everybody. Hope you had a good week. Like a welcome visitors if we have any. And welcome those online who's watching. All right. But before we get started, of course, let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we'd like to thank you again for bringing us here on another beautiful Sabbath morning. Lord, we thank you for your mercies and watch care. We thank you for everything you have done for us, Lord. Food, clothes, and shelter. And Lord, we pray now that as we go into this important lesson, Lord, that you uh, be with us, give us understanding and wisdom uh, from this week's topic, Lord, because it's so important. And bring back to my memory what I've studied this week, what, what you would have us to hear today. So be with us, be with those that's on their way. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right. All right. Al Gian, open up the notes just a little bit. Okay, today's topic, spiritualism exposed. Spiritualism exposed. And we're going to go to 1 Thessalonians 4.16. Not, not that much. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's good. 1 Thessalonians 4.16 which is our memory text for today. And it says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. And again, that's in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. This is known as the, the hope. This is, this is the hope verse right here. All right? This is the promise. And it's also known as one of the most noisiest, vo uh, noisiest uh, verses in the Bible as well. You know, we're going to get into, we're going to talk about, we're going to touch on the rapture a little bit. But, you know, they're talking about a secret rapture. When the Lord comes, there's going to be a lot of noise happening. That's right. We, we, everybody will know. All right? Let me just read something on, on, it, on, a, on Sabbath afternoon. Decades ago, stories surfaced about near-death experiences, which is called NDEs, in which people who died and were then revived again, uh, re re revived, gave incredible accounts of what they had seen and heard while dead. Millions now believe that these accounts are evident that the dead are not really dead. This foundational belief of spiritualism is one of Satan's most widespread and effective deceptions, you know. And this, that is one of the, the, the faith that one of the uh, entities or, or if you want, one of the ways that spiritualism is exposed and it's through any deeds, you know. The devil is working any kind of way he can. I, I remember when I was... Uh, I was watching something on YouTube. I, I used to watch, I used to like watch things on YouTube. I still do actually. And this guy was saying how he just about died, but then he saw his body, his spirit, his spirit lifted up out of his body and he went to heaven. And he said that when he went to heaven, it was beautiful. He said that then finally he met Jesus. And he said Jesus was just perfect. I mean, his hair was perfect. He had beautiful hands, beautiful feet, you know, just gorgeous and so I'm listening and then it just hits me and then, and then he said then he left and then he came back and Jesus and it was just he was yeah, Jesus was perfect so the first thing that came to my mind was like where are the scars there's supposed to be scars right that's the first answer I said where are the scars so then in my mind now I know maybe he do, he's not doesn't know truth so I'm not saying that I'm not saying he's going to hell but you know it goes to show you 
that we have truth, because our teachings tell us that Jesus' scars will be in him forever. All right? So if a Jesus does appear to you and there's no scars, what does that tell you? Right. You know, but he believed, and this is the way the devil is working. All right? He's not playing. This is the last days. We're in the last seconds. All right? In fact, spiritualism began back in Eden with the serpent's lie to Eve. You will not surely die. This idea lay at the root of the greatest spurious religious movement of the 19th century with the Fox sisters. So spiritualism, we got to understand, when we say spiritualism, automatically we think about the dead. Okay? It's not, spiritualism just, just does not, when we talk about spiritualism, it's not just about the dead. It's any medium that the devil can talk to. All right? Was anybody dead in Eden? No, nobody was dead in Eden, but yet spiritualism was happening because the devil was using other uh, avenues to communicate with us. All right? And we're going to see some other ways too. So it's not just dealing with, with dead people. All right? The aim of this lesson is to show that our only safeguard against Satan's last day delusion is a personal relationship with Christ and a solid uh, grounding in the teachings of the Bible. And that's it. Long story short, we have to know the word of God. All right? We have to. We can't, you know, a lot of people want to live, especially, you know, in our church too, but the other churches, they want to live between Matthew and John. They just, they just want to hear the gospel. They don't want to hear nothing else. All right? But once you get the gospel, the God... The Lord is going to show you other things. He's going to lead you to these other places in the Bible. Especially now, he's going to lead you to Daniel and Revelation. So we need to know this stuff. All right? It says here, little by little, he, Satan, has prepared the way for his masterpiece of deception in the development of spiritualism. He has not yet reached the full accomplishment of his designs, but it will be reached in the last remnant of time. Things are going to happen that has never happened before. Okay? We need to prepare our minds and hearts, and I don't think we really are, because we really don't understand what's going on here. All right? We're being set up for this end-time delusion. This is his end game. All right? He hasn't reached it yet. But we know, which we will talk about, the culmination will be when he come and impersonate Christ. All right? But there's a lot of other things that's going to happen before that. And that's happening right now that we have, to, we, have to be, we have to be ready for. Okay? Sunday. And you, you have the microphone, brother? Okay. You got, if you have a comment, uh, Brother Desnard had the microphone, all right? The deadly consequences of spiritualism. Sunday lesson. The fable that death is really just Entrance to a new stage of life is based on the concept of the soul's natural immortality. I'm going to go down a little bit. The theory of the immortality of the soul was one of those false doctrines that Rome borrowed from paganism, incorporated into the religion of Christendom. And that, that's found in the Great Controversy. Uh, bless you. In the, great controversy, in the Great Controversy. And this is big. All right. The immortality of the soul. This is what's going to bring in the masses. Spiritualism is going to pull the masses in. Okay, and if we're not careful, it's going to pull us in too. I'm, I'm pretty sure this some adventure is going to be pulled right in. All right? Because we're surface reading. We have to read and understand these things. The Lord, wait a minute, I think I have a slide. Let's, let's do some more reading. On spiritualism. Evangelism. Spiritualism is about to take the world captive. So these are warnings I'm reading. There are many who think that spiritualism is upheld. Spiritualism is upheld through trickery and imposture. But this is far from the truth. Superhuman power is working in a variety of ways. And few have any idea as to what will be the manifestation of spiritualism in the future. The foundation for the success of spiritualism has been laid in an assertion that have been made from the pulpits of our land. 
the ministers have proclaimed as Bible doctrine falsehood that, that have originated with the arch deceiver. And I grew up thinking it was a hoax. You know, I mean, you, you, when, I'm, when I was young, before I started, I thought it was, come on, ain't nothing. You know, it's just, I mean, I knew it was something other than human, but I just never thought about, I just thought it was tricks. I thought somebody was just trying to do play tricks and magic on us. So I started studying that this, th this stuff is real. And remember, it talks about ministers. And it continues, we'll get back to that. The doctrine of the consciousness after death or the spirits of the dead being in communion with the living has no foundation in the scriptures. And yet these theories are affirmed as truth. Satan has a religion. He has a synagogue and devout worshipers to swell the ranks of his devotees, he uses all manner of deceptions. So the Bible, Bible condemns spiritualism to the fullest. It has no foundation in the Bible whatsoever. Okay? But yet there's so many that still believe that when you die, you're not dead. You have to believe. I'm, I'm going to keep saying this over and over again. When you die, you are dead. Do we understand that? It's just a uh, thing right there. Yes, the dead know nothing. God took our breath away and we went to sleep. Amen. That's, and that's it. He and gave us the breath of life and he took it away and put us asleep. That's right. And we're going to talk about sleep in a minute. Thank you. All right. And we talked about ministers. So a spiritualism in the church, does it exist today? It does. Spiritualism exists in the church. And it talked about how these things are taught from our pulpits a, a, a time back. The name of this lesson is The Deadly Consequences of Spiritualism. All right? The secret rapture is taught in other churches. Y'all have heard of that, right? All right. And it's dangerous, and it has deadly consequences because... If you believe that you're going to be raptured before trouble comes on this earth, you're not going to be prepared when trouble comes on the earth. You understand that? Okay? You have to be prepared. They're preparing to leave. So what's going to happen when things start happening real bad, like we just read, spirits and all that, and they're still here? They haven't prepared their heart over the year to depend on God. You, you understand? The only dependence is on, the, let me give you an example. The Great Depression, you know, and this happened with a lot of the rich. You know, the, the, of course, the stock market crashed, and people lost a lot of money. And what did they start to do? Commit suicide. Because they never mingled with the poor. They never talked with people. They never got to know. They had, they had no sympathy or empathy for people less fortunate. They lived up here and forgot about everybody down here. So when the Great Depression came, they didn't know how to survive. Right? They didn't know how to survive. And their only way out was to jump off of the building. All right? So just like this rapture theory, when it comes to the point when things get real bad, the brother says that we haven't seen anything yet, then is their faith rooted and grounded so much in Christ that they understand that Christ will get them through it. Not take them out before, but get them through it. All right? So we have to understand that. All right? That it's in the church. And there's other, there's other avenues in the church too that we can talk about that maybe I'll touch on. Um, if we get just, I got so much notes, it's, it's unbelievable. There's so much, there's so much in the Bible and the spirit of prophecy on this that is, that is amazing. And a lot of this is going on now. It says here, the Lord forbid his people from involvement in occultism of any kind. They were not to tolerate among them a medium or a spiritist or one who calls up the dead. And we see that in Deuteronomy 8, 19, 8, 18, 9, and 7. It says, when thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abomination of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or daughter pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or observer of times, or an enchanter, or witch. All right, divination is fortune telling, observer of times is astrology, or somebody who predicts the future. All right? Um, or 
or charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer for all that do these things are an abomination to the Lord. So we, we understand this. All of that. If anybody want to come tell you the future, leave. I remember when I was a little boy in New York and we used to go down the street. Remember the hand you see on the window? And the devil plays when you, you, you always you wonder. You want to go in there so bad. And it, you know, as you're coming up in the kid, you're like, wow, tell your future. But I'm glad I never went one of them things. Never. Stay away. Such people were to be stoned if they did these things. The punishment seems incredible, incredibly harsh, but it was designed to protect Israel from the worshiping false gods. Witchcraft is demonic. It seduces people into false worship and counterfeits a genuine relationship with God. But it can never satisfy the deepest needs of the heart. Spiritualism is at the heart of Satan's plan to take the world captive. All right? Just like we talked about earlier, this is what he's going to use to bring in the masses. So number one, we have to understand that the dead are dead. Okay? Um, so the question is, are the dead really dead? What? No, the dead are really dead. Right. Well, okay, in the sleep way. Okay, yes. I'm just saying you 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 have no consciousness. Right. Right. I understand. You get see you keep getting to the sleep part. I'm getting to the sleep part. <laughs> but you're dead in the human sense, you're dead. Okay. You're not somewhere else. All right? <laughs> it says here, what do these Bible verses at the bottom of Sunday? What do these Bible passages teach us about death and communicating with the dead? All right? Ecclesiastes 9. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished, and neither have any have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. This is what the, the wisest man in the, in, the, in, the, in the Bible said, Solomon. Okay? And these are plain texts, I don't, and I don't understand how people skip these texts that's just plain. I, I had to take some text out because it was going to be too long. Okay? Another one. Is it not an appointed time to, man's, to man upon earth? As the cloud is consumed and vanishes away, so he that goeth down to the grave shall come up no more. He shall return no more to his house, neither shall his place know him any more. God said, what goes into the ground shall not come up no more until the resurrection. All right? Another one. But man dieth and wasted away. Yea, man giveth up the ghost. And where is he? So man lieth down and rises not till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake nor be raised out of their sleep until the resurrection. Do we understand that again? All right. Though unbiblical, the belief that the dead go right to heaven at death has been around for so long and is so firmly entrenched that it's very difficult for people to let go of it. People use a different of use a few texts that are taken out of context to try to justify the belief. But this false teaching leaves them with no protection against deception. Satan can foist on them, especially in the final crisis. And so we have to remember, when we meet people that have these beliefs, we are not to bang on their head and say you're wrong. Because a lot of people take comfort in knowing that their parents or their brother or their sister is in heaven. Do you understand? Okay. You know, some special adventures want to go, no, you're wrong. It's not that. You, we need to learn how to con control our, our, our thoughts in our mouths sometimes. All right? Because, hold on. Hold on. 
You need to give them Bible verses, several Bible verses that will back up what you're saying and not to tell them that it's wrong, but just to lead them to where the word is. Right. And the truth. Right. But, but, but we need to know when to bring them Bible verses to them. You know, we, you can't, you know, if, 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 my, if my brother dies and he believes that she's going to heaven, I just, I'm not going to go to him right away and say, no, this is what the Bible says. You know, let it go. Pray. All right. Let it go. And it'll happen. You know, um, Donette's sister, my wife's sister, she, she uh, you know, she's a devout Christian, you know, but she's not Adventist. And last year we had a, a Bible study on death, spiritualism, I forgot what it's called, a, a Sabbath school lesson. And do you know that she read the whole thing through and then she started asking me questions during the week. And I didn't elaborate. I played like, I played like, it wasn't no big deal to me. So she asked me a question. I just answered it, and I went on and did what I'm doing. She said, okay, and she go back to her room, and, and, she, and she comes back. Okay, so you're saying that? Yep, okay. And I believe she believes it, and I left her alone. To this day, I left her alone, but she read the whole, not just the, the, not just the lesson, the whole quarterly. I forgot it was, it was something on the end time. So we just need to know when to say something, and sometimes it's best not to say nothing at all, all right? Because we don't know how deep, like I said, this thing is deeply entrenched in the churches and in people, you know, and so you're going to go and disturb somebody's peace about their mother and father not being in heaven, you might turn them off forever, all right? So we got to be careful, all right? Death in the Old Testament. Read Psalms, uh, Psalm 6, Psalms 115. And we can't read all of it. I just have a couple. All right. What do these verses teach about the state of the dead? All right. When they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and that peep and mutter, should not a people seek unto their God? Should they seek the dead on behalf of the living? So why not go to God for answers? Or if you're not going to go to God, why not go to people that, that are live people? But you're going to skip God, and we're going to skip living people and go to the dead. Okay? Doesn't make no sense. And again, if you got something to say, does not has the uh, microphone. So just raise your hand. For in death, there is no remembrance of you. In the grave, who will, who will give you thanks? The dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down in silence. There's so, there's so many. So David rested. And we're, going to, we're going to talk about resting now. These are ones to show what is death. Like Sister Maureen, I finally got here. So death. So David rested with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. Right? And this is 1 Kings 2.10, 11.43, and 14.20. Then Solomon rested with his fathers. And I'm just going to go on, you know, for time's sake. Then it says the period that Jerome's reign was 22 years, so he rested with his fathers. So death is really just a sleep. Because whether we come up in the first resurrection or the seventh resur second resurrection, everybody is going to wake up. Do we understand that? But our hope is to be in the first resurrection. You don't want to be in the second resurrection. All right. So we just sleep. You know, and it said and, and, and it's like it's going to be like when we go to sleep at night and next, thing you know, the morning's here. When you die, your next conscious moment. You will see the coming of Christ. All right. The Old Testament does not teach the immortality of the soul, nor does it teach that after death, the faithful soul off to a bliss of heaven for eternity and the unfaithful descend to hell where they burn for eternity. It teaches that death is asleep. A failure to understand the truth about death leaves us open to deceptions. All right? What kind of deceptions? You're going to be starting to get, and I'm, I'm mixing Thursday and Friday, Wednesday and Thursday and now, because I don't know if we're going to make it all the way to Thursday and Friday. Sister Hazel has a, a question right there before I go on or, or comment. Yes, good morning, church. Good morning. 
And we notice also that it's not only the Old Testament that talk about um, death is asleep, but Jesus also confirmed it in the New Testament because if we remember it, when, um, when Lazarus was dead, Jesus told his disciples that Lazarus was sleeping. And the disciples were, well, if he's sleeping, then why, you know, they were questioning Jesus about Lazarus sleeping when Lazarus was already dead. Right. So Jesus confirmed with them and said, he is dead. Right. So we see that the Old Testament and the New Testament verify that when one die, one is resting for the resurrection. And when we study further in the, in the lesson this week, we can see the reason why um, the devil uses, uses um, the dead to impersonate others to so satisfy his teaching. As we go further in the lesson, we can see the reason. Amen. Thank you. See, y'all way ahead of me because that's exactly where I was going. And thank you. And Jesus did confirm it. And we're going to talk about it in a minute because we're getting ready to go to the New Testament. Just, we're, going to, we're going to go to Lazarus too, just, just like she was talking about. But she, just Hazel mentioned something else about impersonation. You know, it says, a failure to understand truth about leaves us, to open, leaves us open to the deceptions of Satan. So what are some of the deceptions of Satan is going to happen? That Spirit of Prophecy tells us. That's why it's important, brothers and sisters. I know a lot of us don't want to read it. Okay, but this is for us in the end time. Okay, what's, what Sister White wrote now didn't apply back in biblical times. It applies to us at the end. All right? One thing. Many will be competed by the spirits of devils personating beloved relatives and declaring the most dangerous heresies. These visitants will appeal to our tenderest, symp tenderest sympathies and will work miracles to sustain their pretensions. We must be prepared to withstand them with the Bible truth that the dead know not anything and that they who thus appear are the spirits of devil. Do we understand that? If family members who died appear to you, it's spirit. I remember when my mother died, about five days later, I had a dream and I was at her funeral and all of a sudden she sat up in her coffin and she started praising the Lord. And she looked beautiful. And she was waving her hands and singing. And I woke up and I was like, that's the devil. That's the first thing I said, it's the devil. Okay, we have to have minds like, like that. We have to know when it's happening, all right? He has power to bring before men the appearance of their departed friends. The counterfeit is perfect. The familiar look, the words, the tones are reproduced with marvelous distinction. Many are confident with the assurance that their loved ones are enjoying the bliss of heaven. And without suspicions of danger, they give air to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil. So you're going to try to bring your family members. You're going to try to bring your friends. All right? And, and, and I, didn't, I don't have this one in there, but it's, it's gonna, it's gonna, they're going to try to tell you that the Lord talked to them and said that the Sabbath is really Sunday. All right? So what are we going to do when these things happen? It's easy to say right now, no, it's not going to happen. But if you don't have in your mind that the dead are dead, this is going to happen. The apostles, as personated by these lying spirits, are made to contradict what they wrote at the dictation of the Holy Spirit when on earth. They deny the divine origin of the Bible and thus tear away the foundation of the Christian hope and put out the light that reveals the way to heaven. It's going to impersonate apostles. Okay, and again, I'm, I'm going to tell you, are we ready to see this stuff? All right, are we going to run to Jerusalem? Are we going to run to the synagogues? Or are we rooted and grounded in the word of God? Yeah. If we do not know the word of God, there's no way because Satan is going to come down. He's going to do all these miracles. Mm -hmm. And it's not God on earth. He's going to come down into the desert and he's going to perform all these miracles. He's going to appear like Christ, like an angel. But in, in reality, God is in the innermost high. So we have to know in the word 
that that is not God performing that, that he's going to do everything that he can to take everyone down. Right. You know, but, but and Sister Hayes has something to say. But, uh, but it's Sister Hayes. Right, and that's true. But the, but the devil is not going to make it so that easy. He's going to mix truth and have a so close. Listen, these people that's in the first day churches, they're smart, intelligent people. They're not dumb, right? But it's the deception that, that Satan could put so close to truth that deceives. Hey. Yes, brethren, this part of the lesson is so important, the impersonation. Because as we study this week, we see in Daniel 7, there are going to be a partial resurrection. Mm -hmm. And this is in the future, where there will be a partial resurrection that there are going to be two classes of people that will come up. And it's spoken in, in, in Great Controversy, page 637. Give us an outline of that. Some of those that will come up in the second resurrection will be, the Bible said they will do wickedly, and the righteous will do righteously. So the devil knew that there's a time coming when there'll be a partial resurrection, when two classes of people will come up, people who died in the past, both the wicked and the righteous, as the, the pen of inspiration said, all who died under the third angel's message since 1844, will come up in this resurrection. And those who pierce Christ will also come up in that resurrection. Now the devil knew this, and because he knew this, he's going to impersonate other people as a counterfeit against God's work. So we have to know the difference between the resurrection of Christ in the future that will become in the partial resurrection, and those that Satan will impersonate, so we will not be fooled. This is our message for the last days, and if we don't understand it, we as Seventh-day Adventists are going to be deceived, because many of us in the church do not know this, the message of the state of the dead. Right, and that's the point. So if I had to break it down, I'll just tell you, don't believe anything you see until you see Jesus coming in the clouds. That's, that's just the main thing. Don't believe nothing you see until you see Jesus coming in the clouds. Stay on the safe side, all right? You know, a lot of people looking and looking. And guess what? You look too hard, you may get deceived. You know, sometimes you just have to turn your back and say, nope, that's the devil, and move on, all right? All right, let's move on. And thank you, Sister Hazel. So it says, death is a rest and sleep until the resurrection. There is no disembodiment spirit hovering around to communicate with the living. Now we get to the uh, uh, Tuesday lesson. I'm going to hit a couple of things. We got 15 minutes. How do the New Testament writers describe death compared to those in the Old Testament? And we're going to go to what Sister Hazel was talking about. Let's go to John. These things he said, and after that he said to them, our friend Lazarus sleeps. So she, was, she thinks just like me. But I go that I may wake him up. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they brought that he was speaking about taking, oh wait, but they thought that he was speaking about taking rest and sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. All right? So death is a sleep. It was, it was proven in the Old Testament and the same theology as in the New Testament. It's asleep. But then, one more thing. Then Martha, then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Okay. At the resurrection. So did Martha know her doctrine? Yeah. Will rise in the last day. When Jesus called for uh, Lazarus, he didn't say Lazarus come down. He said Lazarus come forth. Right? So there's no going to heaven when you die. And by the way, the reason why Jesus stayed away for three days was that the... Uh, the Sadducees didn't believe in the resurrection. They believed that when you died, your body toiled for three days, and then it died. 
That's why Jesus stayed away and came on the fourth day to disprove them. And then that's why after Jesus rose Lazarus, that's when the Sadducees and the Pharisees got together and said, okay, listen, we need to kill this guy because he's exposing all of us. So he stayed away four days on purpose, right, to debunk that theory that the Sadducees had. So Jesus knew exactly what he was doing. Both the Old and the New Testament use the symbolism of death as a sleep again. At least 53 times in the Bible, the word sleep is equated with death. Um, I have another one. Okay, well, here go one more. I meant to read. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They have done good. They that have done good unto the regent of light and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So there is no going to heaven or hell. Okay? Literally, we are one breath away from death. And we are two breaths away from a resurrection. You understand that? Okay, one from death, two from the resurrection. All right, now let me finish this. At least 53 times in the Bible, the word sleep is equated with death. The Bible writers concur that there is no conscious existence in an immortal soul that leaves the body immediately after death. The New Testament adds another dimension uh, <clears throat> The new, so, the, so in the Old Testament, it talks about sleep. The New Testament adds another dimension, which is the resurrection. All right? So both talks about, and the resurrection is mentioned here and in the Old Testament, but after Christ died, then the resurrection really was emphasized in the New Testament. So that's the second dimension that is brought. So the conclusion of that, these verses fit perfectly with other Bible texts about the hope we have in the resurrection at Jesus, at Jesus' return when we will receive the inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. If, however, the dead already are in heaven, why did Peter speak of an inheritance reserved in heaven? And let's read that. It said, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away reserved for you in heaven. So we have an inheritance reserved, all right? We don't die and go to our inheritance, okay? You don't die and go to the other place or we don't die and go to the middle place, all right? When we die, we're in our coffins, we turn back into dust, our breath goes back to God until the resurrection. All right. Um, OK, let's move on. We got. Six minutes. Spiritualism in the last days. What kind of deception will people face in the last days? All right. It's, and it's, this is from Matthew 24, Second Thessalonians 2, Revelation 13 and 14 and Revelation 16. I just put it all in here. I read it. Go ahead. Um, when, we, when we look at the subject of uh, spiritualism, we can see like a lot of major religion fell prey to spiritualism. Like for example, Joseph Smith with the Mormons. It was because of spiritualism the Mormon church came to existence because Joseph Smith says he saw three angels who appeared to him and given the tablets of Moroni. Mm -hmm. When we look at the Islamic faith, the prophet um, the prophet Muhammad says he saw Gabriel giving a message of Allah. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these movements, even like they look at um, in our day, the, um, the Black Life Models movement is steep upon ancestral worship. So a lot of these movements that we see in the day, they are enter into spiritualism. I saw an interview where, our, um, what do we call our girl name? Um, she's a very big pop star artist, um, Ariana Grande, where she was being interviewed and she said she is a witch. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are coming out telling you that they are okay being a witch. So you see that what the Bible said in Russian verse 16, verse 12 through 14, that these unclean spirits going out to, to all the world deceive them on the subject of spiritualism. So mm -hmm. it's very important that we understand what the Bible says about it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. 
false Christ and prophets. Last day deception. The lawless one will deceive many with power, signs, and lying wonders. These are from the text that we had to read under uh, Wednesday lesson. Satan uses the Protestant evangelical church to perform all kinds of miracles, signs, even to bring fire down from heaven. All right. And this is one of them that we really don't understand because, you know, as seven Adventists, we always have our eye on the Pope, don't we? Everything is, what's the Pope doing? Did he say anything today? What's happening? You know, which he is a, a great entity in his, his last day, right? Well, let me show you what something Sister White says. Then I saw the mother of harlots, that the mother was not the daughters, all right? So, so Rome has harlots, other churches. The mother was not the daughters, but separate and distinct from them. She has had her day, and it is past. And her daughters, Protestant sect, were next to come on the stage and act out the same mind that the mother had when she persecuted the saints. I saw that as the mother has been declining in power, the daughters have been growing, and soon they will exercise the power once manifested by the mother. Do we understand that? Okay, we are the, you know, when the church was in the White House a couple of years ago, that should have told you something. This is saying keep your eye on the, that the deception is going to come from the evangelical sect. Do we understand that? That's what she's saying. We stop always just looking at the Pope. A lot of people are going to be deceived. Look at the Pope, and, and, and it's coming from this way. He has had his day. Now it's time for them. The hall is to take charge. Do we understand that? Okay, let's move on. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirits of demons performing signs, which go out to the world, to the, go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to that battle of that great day of Armageddon. So that's the false prophet, the beast, and the dragon. The threefold, all right? All of them is coming together. But here in, in, in Protestant America, they're going to take the lead, all right? We got to close, and let me just read one thing. Except those who are kept by the power of God through faith in his word, the whole world will be swept into the ranks of delusion, all right? The Bible says they receive not the love of truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie. We believe everything that we see and hear, and that's not scriptural, all right? We are not to believe everything we see and hear in closing, all right? The devil is going to bring all kind of things, all right? And we discussed this before in my spiritualism sermon I did a couple of years ago, and, and Brother Jackson, we talked about this, and people noticed from before. But look what Sister White says in closing. Uh, where is it? Okay. What is soon to come upon us? Seducing spirits are coming, are coming in. If God has ever spoken by me, you will be before long here of a wonderful science, a science of the devil. Its aim will be to make of no account God and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. Some will exalt this false science, and through them, Satan will seek to make void the law of God. Great miracles will be performed in the sight of men on behalf of this wonderful science. And the thing is, who are the them? Do you understand what I'm saying? Over the years, we have been programmed watching these movies on aliens, haven't we? Haven't we? Until now, you hear radio shows of people talking about it, all right? And if I, I, didn't, I don't have time, but uh, y'all know Roger Mornay. He, he, he was a devil worshiper, and he was saved by God. But he tells us that uh, God showed him these things were going to happen in the end. How people, and, and, and by the way, if you wake up one morning and you see aliens, who is it? Okay, we all agree with that, right? All right, we are the only fallen world in the whole universe. So if anybody comes here, it's the devil. You understand? And one more, I gotta close. 
Fearful sights of a supernatural character will soon be revealed in the heavens. In token of the power of miracle-working demons, the spirit of devils will go forth to the kings of the earth and to the whole world to fasten them to deception and urge them on to unite with Satan in the last struggle against the government of heaven. By these agencies, rulers and subjects will be, will be alike deceived. All right? So spiritualism isn't just speaking to dead people. It's spiritualism. It's the devil speaking through all kinds of things, through the Ouija board, spiritualism, through seersayers, and, and, and what do you call those people with the hand? Fortune tellers and all of that. Remember, he used the snake in, 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 in the uh, in Garden of Eden. But we got to understand, when it comes to spiritualism, we have to understand and know that this is what he's going to use. And if we're not rooted and grounded in the Bible, we're, we're going we're to be lost. One more thing. Let me just read this. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. This is what we should be looking for. All right? Don't get caught up in all this other stuff because there's deceptions and demons and devils and all that stuff. The dead can't speak to you. Not even in a dream. No visions. Okay? The dead are dead. Everybody say that with me. The dead are dead. The dead is dead. Thank you. All right. I appreciate everybody. And, and really, really, you have to know that. I'm sorry. I keep saying that you have to know that. If you don't know that, you will be deceived. Because the devil know he can you, he can, he can play on your mind. All right? So with that, I got to close. I'm two minutes late. Thank you, everybody, for your participation. And continue to read the lesson, because next week is going to be a good one, too. All right? Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, I'd like to thank you again for this uh, uh, this. Blessed Holy Sabbath day, Lord. We thank you for bringing us together to worship you in spirit and in truth. And Lord, we, we pray, Lord, that you give us the discernment, Lord, to know between truth and error and right and wrong. We know that the devil is coming with these things, Lord, and we have to be rooted and grounded in the word of God. So help us, Lord, to get rooted and grounded and help us then to go out and warn others, first of all, of your saving grace and that the, all the delusion and deception that's coming upon this earth. So be with us, protect us, protect our children, protect our church, Father. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.